A very good morning to everyone. Welcome to today's session on laparoscopic surgery in gynecology by Apollo Cradle. To speak on the topic, we would like to welcome Dr. Abana Ja, our in-house consultant, obstetrics and gynecology. She has done her MBBS, MS, DNB, MRCOG. We would like to welcome you, Doctor. You can now take over the session. Thank you, Chatura, for your introduction. Uh, I am Dr. Abana Ja. Senior Consultant of Statistics Gynecology, working in a holocranial group field back here. Uh, very good morning to all my listeners. So uh, I've chosen a topic of uh, laparoscopic in gynecology, laparoscopic surgeries in gynecology. I'm sure most of you would have been aware of this word or this type, the type of this surgery one or the other time in your lifetime, either through directly you or one of your relatives or anybody. Now, uh, let, me, uh, let me first make you understand that what is laparoscopic surgery? There are ample number of words which have been used for this. Some people call it as laser surgery. Some people call it as keyhole surgery. Some call it as laparoscopic surgery. Some call it as uh, office procedure or a short surgery, whatever it is. Uh, you know, when it came uh, years back, now very commonly used from at least 15 to 20 years in gynecology or maybe more than that. So it is a revolutionary step in surgery, in surgical field or especially in gynecological field. Uh, so this is a method of surgery. So there is nothing specific about as such laparoscopic surgery. It is basically a method of surgery through which we can do all those, most of those surgeries, which we do by a open surgery. When we call, when we talk about open surgery, it means that we put much bigger cut on the patient's tummy. Most of the time, the, almost all the gynecological surgeries are done through abdominal route, few of them through vaginal route, but uh, those which can be done by opening the abdomen, by giving a cut in on the abdomen like cesarean section, somewhere around 10 centimeter of cut, the same thing can be performed by probably a one centimeter or one and a half, one and a half centimeter cut at the navel area or, and maybe one or two few millimeters cut in the other side of the tummy. Now what we do, uh, this is the basics of laparoscopic surgery. So what we do is that when we have decided that this patient is for a particular surgery, we, uh, you know, first we see whether the patient can be taken up for the laparoscopic surgery or not. Fortunately, most of the cases who can be operated can be operated through laparoscopic surgery. Okay, so there is there are not much of contraindications of laparoscopic surgery. If a patient needs a surgery, then a laparoscopic surgery can be done. So surgeries in gynecology, starting from abdominal, uh, starting from hysterectomy, that is uterus removal, or ovarian re ovary removal, or tube removal, or ectopic pregnancy, or um, cyst removal, or PCOD, or diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy, all these surgeries, all these can be done through laparoscopic surgery. So what we do is that we put a small cut at the navel area, put a camera inside, look inside that Pandora box, what we call it as, we call it as Pandora box. So we look into that. We again inflate the whole of the abdomen through some air. It's a defined air composition through which we inflate the abdomen. So the abdomen box becomes like a balloon wherein we can see those structures on which we need to operate upon. And through other two ports, two or three ports, uh, depending upon the need, we, we put the other instruments inside. So the instruments which we hold directly with our hand in open surgery, these are the longer instruments which we are holding from outside, like a scissor, like a cutter, like a forceps, like a, a, you know, a, a burning agent, whatever it is. That all those we put inside and then we operate upon inside. When this procedure had come into picture a couple of years back, we really did not have many of those instruments through which 
even if we could cut a big uterus there inside the Pandora box, inside the tummy, we did not know how to take the whole thing out through that small hole. Because as you understand, there's a small hole there, okay? So for few of them, we used to use earlier, there is something, I mean, you know, when we cut it there, then it becomes a free structure inside the tummy. And then we take it out through the vaginal wall, through the vaginal area, through the natural opening. That, that those were assisted, laparoscopic assisted surgery, laparoscopic assisted vaginal hysterectomy, laparoscopic assisted cystectomy, like that we used to do. But then now at this point of time, we have uh, beautiful instruments like mausolators, which make this big uh, uterus can be churned into, we, we have churners literally the, uh, you know, like, you know, for example, imagine you have a coconut, a huge coconut, you put it in the mixie and the mixie grinds it and it becomes a powder. Almost the same way we have mausolators which grinds it or which makes it like a piece, hot dog piece. And then we suck it out through this small pore. And that is how we complete the whole procedure. Which procedure can be done through laparoscopy? Almost all, as I told you, if a patient is operable, most of the procedure can be done through laparoscope. Now, there are times when we have multiple fibroids, huge fibroids, something like, you know, a big one, like 3 kg, 4 kg. That's something which we still, uh, I mean, not that it cannot be done, but that's where the procedure uh, length goes very long. And we generally try to avoid that. But rest of the other procedures can be done with it. This laparoscopy procedure has become a boom or has got a revolutionary impact on the infertility treatment or, or at the diagnosis of infertility. Like if the patient is trying to conceive and if she's not able to conceive, then what is the reason? As a doctor, a couple of tests we can do from outside without looking inside to know whether the patient is ovulating or not or whether the patient is... Um, you know whether the uterus size shape is normal or not but there are many of those factors which we want to look upon we want to see inside why the patient is not being able to conceive so what we call it as diagnostic hystero laparoscopy means that we want to diagnose why this patient is not being able to conceive we put a camera from top we can put a camera from inside the uterus. The camera which we put inside the uterus, that's called as hysteroscopy. Hystero means uterus. So to scope. The open surgery in the open. cannot be the functionality of the tubes cannot be visualized by ultrasound examination so for that we do a chromoperturbation a tube test to know if the patient has a small cyst or if there's a bad polycystic ovary we also do ovarian drilling for that so these all are the procedures so by this by this diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy at least we are able to conclude why this patient is not able to conceive and then from there onwards we take uh, you know, we put her into the treatment plan, whether she needs some further surgical intervention or whether she needs some treatment for this uh, unexplained infertility or not. So this was about the infertility. The same way, if, if there is a huge cyst or, or ovarian cyst in the, um, in the ovary of the patient, earlier we used to do an open uh, cystectomy, which was a... a the cyst removal was not such a major thing, but the recovery of the patient through this 10 centimeter open cut was a major thing. Patient had to at least, even in the most um, uh, modern setups also, the patient had to be in rest for a couple of days. And then that's when we used to make the patient mobilize and then slowly the patient would go back home after four days or five days, even at home because of the bigger cut, she would have a lot of, I mean, the recovery period would be much longer. Now, the recovery period can be reduced by 80% by, 
by doing the same laparoscopic surgery. Because as such, when we do a cystectomy, the cystectomy per se is not a painful thing. The painful thing is the skin incision. That incision is the one which heals up and the patient feels the pain of that. So when we can make that incision really, really small, you know, we just, as I told you, one or two centimeter cut. So you can understand that if the skin incision is so small, the recovery is much faster. Nowadays, most of these small procedures like cystectomy and all have become something like what we call it as office procedure. We make the patient, I mean, you know, it's like, a uh, patient comes in the morning, goes back home by evening or very next day morning, and the patient is able to do her regular physical activity at least from the very next day. Even the weightlifting and everything has become much easier after the laparoscopic procedure. The uh, infection to the wound, to the big wound, is the chance of that is much higher than the infection in the small wound, like a laparoscopic wound. Generally, laparoscopic wound, we do not see much of infection. The other thing, the other thing is called herniation or hernia. When we when we put a cut onto the onto the skin or onto the rectus sheath, a bigger cut, we definitely, even though we have done our best, uh, you know, surgical uh, skills we have used there, still there is a chance of herniation or weakening of the rectus sheath. The chances of herniation is much higher in open surgery than in laparoscopic surgeries. Uh, so with all this, uh, of course, the laparoscopic surgery as of now at today's date has become the surgical uh, skill of the hour. Uh, even the bigger uterus which we assume that cannot be taken out through laparoscope can be easily taken out through laparoscopic surgery as i told you i explained you earlier also we have a beautiful instrument called harmonic scalpels mosolators uh, endoseals with all this we can make sure that the blood uh, even the uh, you know the blood loss while we are doing the procedure is much much lesser in laparoscopic surgery as compared to the open surgeries. At times, yes, there are situations wherein uh, even in laparoscopic surgeries, if we are unable to, you know, if we are unable to perform the whole laparoscopic surgery, we go ahead and open the case or make it uh, open laparotomy, but that happens in a very rare circumstances. Uh, as I told you about the blood loss, the blood loss is much lesser in laparoscopic surgery the same way uh, even the approach you know the uh, there are times when we have to operate upon the behind structure or upon the upper structure very much upper like interior abdominal wall structure in those cases because the visibility when we are when we are cutting down the abdomen and we are trying to look inside the upper abdominal wall it becomes very difficult so in those cases also, the interior abdominal wall surgeries are much easier by laparoscopy because the visibility through the camera, we can just twist the camera 360 degree and look into the upper abdominal wall as if we are looking it down. So those are the ways by which we can make it much easier or, or it becomes much easier, much more convenient for the surgeon and of course for the, for the patient. Of course, yes, it requires the laparoscopic surgery, it requires many instruments which are extra, which are procured by the hospital. It requires the skill which are obtained by most of our most of us as laparoscopic surgeon. And when we are well versed with it, when we know that the hospital has all those advantages of laparoscopic surgery, all the instruments and all that, it's always preferred to have a laparoscopic surgery than a uh, open surgery be it a cystectomy, be it a cyst removal, or be it a polycystic ovary, or be it a uterus removal surgery, be it a tube canalization surgery, be it a, even a tubectomy, you know, family planning procedures. Earlier, uh, I remember in our olden days when we were in medical colleges and uh, in a government medical setup, um, uh, we, used to, we used to, you know, keep the patient at least for two days once we have done our open surgery, even in a government medical college setup. But later, when, as in how we started doing this laparoscopic tubal occlusion, what we call it as LTO, in a day we could finish like 10 to 12, 15 cases of LTO 
and discharge them on the very same day. So it, uh, it saves a lot of time of the patient. It saves a lot of time for those who are on, uh, for, who, for them, you know, time is money or for those daily wages worker or even for those office goers who, for whom it is, is very important that they save some time. And of course, it is very, very uh, convenient for the body to recover from that small surgical, in, uh, small surgical uh, site uh, cut rather than a big surgical cut. So um, I think with this, I'll conclude my uh, uh, chat. If there are questions, I would want to answer them. Uh, let me check. Yes, I do see a couple of questions. Is, is it a surgical procedure or a diagnostic? Uh, just a sec. Doctor, can you walk or perform light exercises post laparoscopic surgery? Yes, very much. That is one of the major advantage of laparoscopic surgery that you can, on the very same day, like just today morning, I operated upon a patient for laparoscopic surgery and now she's, they would be giving her something to eat and by afternoon she'll be able to walk around when I discharge her home, I tell her that after a week or so, you can start your regular, normal, light walking and exercises. That's perfectly okay. What should I avoid doing before a laparoscopic surgery, doctor? It all depends on what, what procedure you have to go for, even in laparoscopy. What laparoscopic surgery? As I told, it is just a means of the surgery. It is, you know, a way by which we do perform a surgery. So if you have a uh, major surgical intervention like uh, uterus removal and all then probably your doctor would be letting you know that what all you are not supposed to do per se in terms of laparoscopic surgery that if you are undergoing a laparoscopic surgery what all you should be avoiding nothing much it's a regular thing how can i how soon can i eat after surgery doctor again it it depends on what type of surgery it has been um, if it is a major long procedure they generally we generally say our anesthetist they say that six to eight hours of empty stomach is required eight to ten hours if it is minor surgery wherein we have not handled much of your bubble and all that then in that case five to six hours should be good enough can laparoscopic surgery be used to treat infertility cases yes i answered your question it is it is a metamorphotic surgery uh, a means of surgery when we did uh, when this laparoscopy came in terms of infertility we can do a diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy on the same day to the patient morning and discharge the patient in the evening we can also do uh, many of the times if we see a very small tubal blockage we can also try to uh, open up the tubal blockage if there is if there is any cyst we can we do try to do a cystectomy through laparoscopic procedure if there are resistant polycystic ovary diseases pcod resistant pcod which are not answering with the medication then ovarian drilling can be done for that so all these can be done uh, for infertility can be done laparoscopically doctor can laparoscopic surgery be performed on pregnant women yes we do perform laparoscopic surgery for pregnant women uh, I remember having a case a couple of weeks back. Uh, there was the 16 week old, 16 week pregnant patient who had a huge ovarian cyst, and um, we did have to remove the ovarian cyst uh, because it was causing much of trouble to her. And that was done laparoscopically. Yes, it can be performed laparoscopically. Generally, we do not perform a laparoscopic surgery on a pregnant woman once she's about 20 to 22 weeks because after that the uterus size becomes bigger. But before that. It can be performed. What is the downtime after the surgery, doctor? Does it have any side effect, long-term disabilities post the surgery? No. Um, laparoscopic surgery, of course, yes, there is not much of side effect. No long-term disability. Absolutely. No. What are the risks associated with the laparoscopic surgery? Uh, if, if you're just talking about the laparoscopic surgery, uh, uh, the same as it is for the any of those open surgery in fact much lesser than those open surgeries uh, the risks related to anesthesia or whatever nothing nothing per se because of laparoscopic surgery yes sometimes when we start you know if if there is a huge fibroid say if there is a big uh, big mass which we want to remove so when we start with a laparoscopic surgery we know that at times we may fail there is a possibility that the surgery could not be 
completed through only a laparoscope. We tell the patient about it prior. We take, uh, we take the patient's consent and then we convert this laparoscopic surgery into an open surgery if needed. Is a surgical procedure of or a diagnostic? Is it a surgical procedure or a diagnostic procedure? Laparoscopy surgery is very much a surgical procedure. It can as well be used as a diagnostic procedure. So um, it is all the surgery, most of the surgery, 90% which are to be performed by open method, by a big cut, can be performed through laparoscopy surgery. It is very much a surgical procedure. As well, it can be used as a diagnostic procedure because the cut is very small. So the in diagnostic procedure, we have a huge upper hand that we can discharge the patient on the very same day. Would you recommend any lifestyle changes post the surgery doctor? No, nothing, not much of any of those lifestyle changes. It could be uh, you, I mean, if at all you, the reason of your procedure is weight gain or something, then that's a different thing, but otherwise no lifestyle. Thank you. With this, I'll conclude my job. Thanks a lot, doctor. That was a very informative session. Uh, we look forward to having you on more such sessions. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into today's session on Apollo Cradle and Children's Hospital. Please keep liking this post and keep up to date on the page. Thanks a lot. Thank you, doctor. Thank you.